Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, my research paper, which is part of my PhD, is talking about does corruption or control of corruption matter for entrepreneurship uh, in the context of post-communist countries? We will start with the research problem, and later on we will discuss the theoretical background about it. Um, then we are going to suggest a conceptual framework, uh, plus the research context that we are going to test our uh, model. Later on, I will inform you about the uh, data sets, from where we got the data sets for our model. And finally, we'll discuss the results and discussion, conclusion, and the limitation for our research. Well, probably you may ask yourself in the beginning, well, this is an old topic. Corruption is bad anyway. So why should we, what kind of contribution are going to add? Well, I would like to tell you that uh, there is a theory grow, uh, called uh, or named Greece the Wheel Theory, which is still um, has a strong argument in the literature uh, that corruption is still good for entrepreneurship and economic growth by giving more efficient and speed, um, uh, could speed up the procedures for uh, entrepreneurs. And, and thus, we can have better economy, which is the wheel. Maybe you say, oh, that's an argument. Maybe we could support this. And it was empirically supported, even in recent literature, by Dreher and uh, Gassmuller. However, the second theory, which is it's a more broader, that uh, there is called sand the wheel theory, which means for the long term, it's bad for the economy and bad for entrepreneurship. By uh, corrupt officials, they keep um, seeking rents or benefits from entrepreneurs, and thus they are like milking the cow of the economy. Um, both strands of these theories I have noticed, me and my colleagues, the co-authors, that there are some main issues about these two uh, theories. The first issue is that <clears throat> they don't consider the lens, as Professor Mansour said, of institutional economics whenever they talk or discuss about corruption. So we have to put it in the right framework of, institu of institutional economy. The second issue here is they do not consider, because corruption, uh, as a definition, it's the informal uh, abuse of public assets for private gains. So in this case, we have to consider corruption with the interaction with other institutions in order to offer us better uh, understanding of this phenomenon. And the third one is that uh, usually they consider corruption has a direct effect on entrepreneurship or a direct effect on uh, economic growth. How about indirect effect as a moderator or mediator? And we will discuss the theory behind it. And the fourth issue probably is that they don't consider a specific context. So for example, if you want to have a cure for cancer patients, you should test this uh, cure or medicine on cancer patients, not all in all patients. And that's what they do sometimes. They test corruption on developed countries, which relatively, although they have some corruption levels, they have less corruption than other developing countries. So based on these gaps, if you may call them, or these issues, we are going to build up our theoretical background. Our theoretical background is based on Nobel Prize winner, uh, Mr. Douglas North, who had major contribution uh, on, in the field of institutional economics. Uh, these uh, two famous books, as was written here, they are written here. Uh, what he is trying to argue or to suggest in his contribution, that institutions, uh, in general, broadly defined as rules of the game, so who played Monopoly? Does anyone play Monopoly here? 
So usually when you play Monopoly, usually we have rules. We have to follow the rules. Me, myself, I used to prefer the red color lands because I have more taxes and, you know, it is, it is more expensive, but usually um, it is much better. So anybody who is going to be in my land, oh, welcome to my land. But I, was, I, was, I wasn't very lucky in Monopoly. Usually my friends, they would win the game. So institutions are rules of the game where it could shape the behavior of individuals in a certain economy by giving motivations for individuals or entrepreneurs to be more productive. Also, he was suggesting that institutions are divided into formal and informal institutions, where formal institutions usually are imposed by governments, such as rules and regulations. And we have the informal institutions, such as culture and social norms. The main contribution in his um, uh, literature as I have noticed, that there is always a continuous interaction between formal and informal institutions. In that sense, what we are trying to uh, suggest here in our framework that whenever there are some good reforms from the government, it should be accompanied by controlling corruption because corruption is considered as part of culture or a social norm. Because in any country, when, there is, when corruption is pervasive or widespread, it becomes embedded in the culture in a way that may hinder the government reforms for any certain economy. So that's mainly the, the main theoretical background here. And based on this theoretical background, we proposed our conceptual framework, which was adopted by Genuali and Fogel, 1994, Although the conceptual framework is a little bit um, old, however, it is still empirically tested recently by a new literature or recent literature. Uh, the main contribution here is that we considered corruption as a moderator for the relationship between formal institution or government institution reforms to entrepreneurship. The main argument here is that uh, having government reforms uh, based on number of procedures, tertiary education or entrepreneurship education, access to credit or the financial uh, capital plus technology absorption, uh, it cannot have a good impact or a strong impact on entrepreneurship unless it is accompanied by uh, control of corruption. So control of corruption here may uh, strengthen the relationship between formal institutions and entrepreneurship activity. Uh, to test this, uh, this uh, model or to test this conceptual framework, uh, we try to find a good context for this. And this context is post-communist countries for 14 countries years 2006 till 2014. So the data we have is panel data or what's called longitudinal data. And that's one of the issues here that sometimes they test corruption as a cross-sectional. They test it for one year. But guess what? When you test corruption for one year, you cannot observe the behavior of corruption or the trust between people and the government. So it was very important to test it in a longitudinal data. Again, these countries, they show, shared um, common histories with respect to the institutional uh, development and with uh, inheriting uh, corruption uh, from as, as a former uh, Soviet Union. However, if we have noticed post-communist countries nowadays, we notice that not all countries are in the same stage of economic development. Some countries like Slovenia, Slovenia, they have managed to be more advanced than other post-communist countries. So it could be an interesting context for us to test why these countries, even though they came up from the same context, they reach better institutional environment. So the question that we are going to ask here, do formal institutions affect entrepreneurship activity in an environment that have a widespread corruption or lower levels of corruption. Um, the main variables, the second, it, was, it is a secondary data. It cannot be through surveys because it is through nine years. And the secondary data was taken based on literature also. It wasn't like from my mind. Uh, based on uh, World Bank, 
uh, UNESCO, uh, Global Com Competitive Index, and uh, doing business reports. So uh, here we are going to discuss the theoretical background for each uh, formal institution and how would it affect and how control of corruption would affect this relationship. First of all, to test this model, we made, or I made, a f uh, two models. First model is to test it before moderation, and the second model to test it after moderation. Excuse me. So the first uh, formal institution was number of procedures. Um, in the literature, it's argued that less number of procedures would increase the entrepreneurship activity. However, what we were suggesting that if we control corruption, if we have an environment with more corruption-free environment, in this case, the impact of procedures will be much better on entrepreneurship. And I can tell that I had a personal uh, uh, experience about this uh, when I still have like a family business. Uh, I've done like a couple of procedures with a certain institution ex-institution, and the first two years, it was very nice. In one week, I could finish these procedures. In the third year, a, a guy came to me, and he told me, you know, you should give me some bribe, bakhshish, we saw it in Arabic. And I was like, well, I did it a couple of years, it was similar, and I estimate I would complete it in one week, so why should I pay you? And it's clear, it's on the paper, and procedures are clear. However, it took me like more than a month to finish it. We offered a complaint and it was, you know, the issue was resolved. However, it, it took us more than we expect. So that's on my personal level. However, from also from the results, we can tell that control of corruption would uh, strengthen the relationship between number of procedures and entrepreneurship. We move to the second relationship between education and entrepreneurship. As we can notice here, Educated individuals, it is not significant to entrepreneurship. However, if we control corruption, it will be more significant or much significant, however, in a negative way. There is a theoretical background behind this. Whenever we have controlled corruption, we can save more money as a government. And this money can be invested into education, which thus will affect entrepreneurship level. However, because it is negative, it is argued in the literature that educated individuals may work for big corporations instead of opening their businesses. Uh, but later on, these emerging economies, like post-communist countries, if they reach a stage of innovation, they may see better returns to open their own businesses if they are educated. The third one is about access to credit and entrepreneurship. The theory behind it here, before moderation, that usually entrepreneurs, if they want to start up their businesses, usually they depend on their uh, savings or social network, family connections, and so forth. That's why it is a little bit, we have here a negative relationship. However, if we control corruption, entrepreneurs, they have more trust in the capital infrastructure, and thus they would like to have or to borrow money from financial infrastructure and start and grow their businesses in, in a more trust relationship between entrepreneurs and society. The last one here, firm level technology absorption. And here we are talking about uh, entrepreneurship that is based on technology. Uh, the first before, uh, the first model, it is more significant than a negative relationship, which tells us that entrepreneurs, they are not using entrepreneurship much in their businesses. However, if we control corruption, it, it means that, or the theoretical background behind it, that officials may facilitate technology to come into the country or have more, can uh, offer more transferring technology into the country, and thus entrepreneurs can get benefit from internet and other, other technology uh, bases in order to have more productive entrepreneurship in a sense that it have, can increase the pie of economic growth. So the conclusion behind uh, this uh, paper is that uh, it is important whenever we discuss uh, uh, corruption as a part of culture, 
It's important to be part of interaction with other institutions. Discussing or testing corruption uh, uh, separately from other institutions would not give us a good, better understanding for our literature and for the conceptual framework. This paper has three main contributions that it may advance the existing theory of institutional economics. Also, it was among the first conceptual framework that tests corruption as a moderator between formal institutions and entrepreneurship. And thirdly, our findings could have some implications for government that is without uh, having corruption or uh, that corruption should be accompanied by institutional reforms in, or in order to reach the desired outcomes from productive entrepreneurship activity. The last slide here that we have some limitations and it could be a future research that uh, we here we tested entrepreneurship uh, as or we measured entrepreneurship as uh, NER, a new entry rate which is part of formal uh, entrepreneurship. It is tested that it is a good entrepreneurship. Uh, it is a productive, formal entrepreneurship. However, there are still some measurements for entrepreneurship, such as corporate entrepreneurship, uh, high growth entrepreneurship, technology-based innovation entrepreneurship, and so forth. We can test it in the future. Um, corruption is not the only culture, the cultural thing that we can depend on. How about national culture? Uh, although we have reviewed some literature about uh, national culture, there's still a, it's still, uh, there is a puzzle about it. Would like individualism is better or collectivism is better, Hofstede model, uh, this kind could be also a moderator for government. Which uh, culture accept government reforms better? Individualism, um, you know, collectivism, and so forth. So it could be an interesting topic to, uh, uh, to you know, dig on. Considering emerging economies at different levels of economic development, and this I'm working on it now for my thesis. I'm expanding my context for 44 emerging economies. I'm trying to compare so far, I did it yesterday. I compared between 20 economies or 22 economies in the innovation stage and 22 economies in the efficiency stage, which is called like developing economies. And we found some interesting results. Uh, last thing is choosing larger samples, as I just mentioned, and probably it could be useful also to test this model for resource-based economies or other African or Asian countries who suffer also severely from corruption. So that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>